We're outside the School of Chemistry at the University of Nottingham and we're just about to go off on quite a long drive. I'm not allowed to tell you where we're going yet, but if you look, you can see my colleague, Steve Liddell, our radioactive expert, is with us. So it might give you a clue. So after a long drive with our chauffeur Steve and an overnight stay, we here at the National Nuclear Laboratory on the Sellafield site at their central laboratory and we're going to see real radioactive elements. I've never seen them before, but before that we've got the security. So now we finally arrived in the active lab. That's the one where they handle radioactive materials. So we had to go through security, which I can't tell you about. And then we had to dress up in these special safety clothes. What's going on there? And I've got these trendy shoes, which again, I'd rather not tell you about. So another thing about here is they have the so-called hands in the pockets rule you're meant to keep your hands in your pockets, which is quite difficult for me. And this is a precaution because although the lab is very clean, it's much cleaner than an ordinary lab, there is just the outside chance that on some surface, if you were touching lots of surfaces, there might be something that was radioactive. And if you then put your hands near your lips, that radioactive particle could get inside you. And some of these elements give out alpha particles, these are helium nuclei, which don't travel very far. So if they're on our clothes, they wouldn't penetrate deep inside the body. But if you get them inside you, then these elements are next to your cells. And if the alpha particle comes out, it can cause real damage. Okay, we're here in the central laboratory and I'm going to show you some neptunium samples. This is neptunium in solution. It's been dissolved uh, and it's in nitric acid at the moment. Obviously here, one of the most impressive things is the engineering of the glove boxes, which is terrific. So in my lab, we use uh, commercial glove boxes which operate under a positive pressure. So sometimes uh, you may have seen the gloves stick right out from the glove box and you have to really push to get your arms in. These are very different. Uh, because they're handling uh, elements which are much more radioactive, there's a greater emphasis on making sure that these elements can't get out. And therefore they use negative pressure glove boxes. So it, they suck air in. So if anything does escape, from your bottle which you're handling, it will be swept out of the glove box rather than being blown into the lab. I was told by one of the people here that before it was made radioactive, when it had just been built and was quite clean, this was opened up to the families of people to come round and they filled one of the glove boxes with balloons and I just have this vision of a sort of party in a glove box which I think would be really very nice. It stresses how all this equipment is quite safe before you start using the chemicals, but once you start using them, then they are contaminated. And so you have to think of your experiments enormously more carefully than you would when you're normally doing chemistry. And everything that comes in this part of the building has to be carefully checked when it comes in and again when it goes out. Even Brady's camera has been checked very carefully in and I hope it will be checked successfully out. So it is a very nice demonstration to someone like me who's been a safety officer of just how carefully you have to work with radioactive materials. Yeah, they're um, sintered uranium dioxide pellets suitable for irradiation in nuclear reactors. The people here are very important 
because they're looking at the chemistry that underlies the separation of the different elements from nuclear waste. When nuclear industry started in the 1940s and the 1950s at the height of Cold War, people were producing waste without really thinking through the long term of how it was all going to be treated and dealt with safely. Now everybody is very conscious of the potential dangers of nuclear waste and it is places like here that are doing the underlying science so that we can separate these elements in a way that is not only safe but is efficient. What one needs to do is really elegant chemistry minimizing the volumes of solvents because otherwise you just add to the problem because you get contaminated solvent and you get more waste than you started with in the first place. The contact radiation dose from them is very high. Basically you're saying if you touch that it's bad. So it emits alpha um, radiation and beta radiation from the plutonium 241. I think that most of the work that is being done here is dealing with waste that already exists. Many people have strong opinions about nuclear industry and nuclear power, but nobody can deny that we've got all this waste. The UK has 100 tonnes of plutonium that has already been generated, and we have to deal with this safely, even if we never build another power station. And therefore, this work has to be done, because if it isn't done, the problem won't go away and it will just get worse as time gets on, as drums corrode more and more and so on. And so this is a very important part of science, which is making our world a safer place. I think of all the things that I've seen today, the thing that I liked most was the beautiful blue colour of plutonium-3. I never really thought about the fact that plutonium salts would be coloured at all. And the fact that you get this dramatic change from a rather dirty brown to this beautiful blue, I think is really great. I'd like to do it myself, but I don't have kit like this. And I don't have the facilities to work with radioactive materials. But it's great to have seen it. We'll show you more detail of the plutonium chemistry in the updated plutonium video, which we'll be uploading quite shortly. Um, so it took me by surprise just how long it took to drive here. And, uh the paperwork was quite interesting but it's definitely been worth it because it's it's quite interesting to see that at the end of the day that this is a laboratory doing science it's just it has all of these labels associated with it what do you mean by that the views people have of nuclear power be it positive or negative it's like marmite people either love it or hate it and there's absolutely nothing in between what i'm really interested in from a scientific perspective because what I see going on here is hardcore science understanding the fundamental properties of elements in the periodic table. I haven't been to a nuclear facility since I was a schoolboy when I went to visit Harwell with a group from my school and one of the boys who didn't keep his hands in his pockets was found with his arms in a drum labelled radioactive waste and there was a big row.